I think we can all admit it's getting a little hot around here. And I'm not just talking about the temperature. Let's talk about what's on all of our minds right now, at least in the real estate world. Let's talk about the stock market. Let's talk about interest rates and let's talk about what's happening right here in the Bay Area in the real estate market. So I think we all have a lot on our minds right now. And if we read the news, everything is over dramatized. So let me tell you about what I see from where we're standing right now. Number one, stock market not doing so well, okay? We all know that. We also are all reading about how interest rates are on the rise. Let me remind you that when I bought my first house in 2004, it was at seven and a half percent. My current mortgage on my now house is at 1.75%, okay? Interest rates fluctuate. What we see when interest rates go up is that eventually housing prices will slightly come down. Now to the buyer, does it really matter? You're kind of on this teeter-totter. Interest rates go up, house prices go down. You're paying more towards interest, but less towards house, less than towards property taxes. So we end up still in kind of the same balance. Okay, so now people are freaking out about, well, what's going on in our real estate market? Are we crashing? Are we going down? We're reading that there's this decline. Okay, let's break this down. It's really simple. The last two years, we have seen an unsustainable rocketing of real estate prices. Low inventory and people wanting to move, to feel security, to feel home. Okay, now what we're seeing and what all the data is indicating is that 2022 is going to look like 2019, which was still a fantastic market, but we cannot hold appreciation of 10 to 15% per year like we did over the last two years. We are coming into a more normalized market. If people wanna freak out that we're not gonna see 10 to 15% increase year after year after year, and now maybe we're gonna see six, seven, eight percent appreciation. Guys, get a grip. We cannot continue to grow at that level. It is not sustainable. I think that we're in a market that's transitioning. And so people right now are feeling a little bit like my feet aren't on the ground. I don't know where things are, where things are going to stand. Now, if you're Warren Buffett, you say, okay, when everyone else is nervous, I get serious and I buy. When everyone else is super bullish, I get nervous and I sit on the sidelines. And that's kind of the way that I believe in investing, especially in real estate, okay? I think if you're a buyer right now, you have an opportunity in the next couple of months, while people are a little uneasy, to swoop up some really good real estate deals. But then we're gonna have a new ground level and a new normal. And then once people feel like they understand the new normal, they're gonna start buying again and you're gonna be like, oh, why didn't I take that chance? And now interest rates may be a little bit higher and we're back to the same problem. So don't be worried. This is just gonna bring us back down to where we were in 2019, which was a great market. Breathe, we're all gonna be good. We live in an awesome place in the Bay Area. Now, lastly, I always go to all different sources for my information, okay? I'm in the MLS looking at data. I'm in NAR looking for data. But I also call all of my lenders and I also talk to my financial advisors. And that's where we're going next, is to Greg Toll at Meritas Advisors. He is fantastic with getting information and breaking this stuff down. So let's meet Greg and see what he thinks about this whole thing. All right, Greg, so before you tell us what you really do for a living. You know I am way more curious about your athletic background, being that we both have a, a pretty prominent athletic background. You were the captain of the Harvard swim team and then continued on to be a very competitive swimmer at the master's level, even going to Italy for, what is it, the master's final? World championship. World championship. Um, but what's interesting to me about people that are, you know, were athletes, are athletes, is the kind of, drive, determination, work ethic that then translates into our life outside of athletics. Yeah. So love to hear your perspective on how that's kind of helped you get into what you're doing and uh, how that helps you help your clients. So that's a great question. The confidence comes from education and from the experience. Uh, I started studying markets and economics in 1987 and I've been working in the field since 1993. So 29 years of seeing a lot of different bear markets, bull markets in all different commodity cycles and interest rate cycles and domestic stock markets, international stock markets. So I have a lot of context 
to understand what the boundaries are, what the possibilities are in markets, and then fit that. The most important thing is to fit it to the client situation. Okay, so advising people on what to do with their money has got to be super stressful. Where do you get the confidence to advise people on how to make these big financial moves? So two ways to put this in context. The more scared people get, the more myopic they get. And they get overly focused on the short term, and that's when they get emotional, and that's when they make mistakes. Mm -hmm. So you have to keep the long term in perspective while still being aware of you have short, intermediate, and long term goals. You have to keep them all in context, but not lose your head just because the market's losing its head. Um, another really important distinction is between investing and trading. Trading is a short-term phenomenon, and it's got its, it's its own thing, and most people are not very good at it. Mm -hmm. But in the long run, it really doesn't matter what happened in the short run. It matters that you got to your goals that are 5 and 10 and 20 and 30 years from now. So we live in a very special place, obviously, especially when it comes to real estate. How do you help clients wrap their heads around whether purchasing versus renting versus how that all works in their portfolio is for them? We do live in such a special place. I love it here. I love skiing and surfing in the same day. And so, but in terms of a big transaction, often real estate, but there are other big transactions in people's lives, whether you're, on the, whether you're buying or whether you're selling, the most important thing is don't let the tail wag the dog. So is, is this the right time for you personally to be buying? Is it the right time for your family to be buying? Is it the right time for you personally to be selling? So yes, we can take the market into consideration, but how important is the need on the personal side? So maybe it's not worth waiting for a slightly different market environment. So everyone's talking about interest rates right now and what that means in terms of buying or selling a home right now. What do you advise people that are feeling a little trepidatious about you know, working in the real estate market right now in, on a purchase or a sale? Markets will fluctuate. Interest rates change over time. If you go back to the 1970s, interest rates were at 15%. You know, not long ago, they were at 2%. So they go all over the map. One exciting thing about if you were looking at buying, for example, in this market is if you purchase a house now, if interest rates fall, then you get to refinance and you get a lower cost in the future. If interest rates continue to go up from here, then you locked in a rate on your purchase at a rate that you're gonna be happy with for a long time. So there's a win-win either way. Okay, so not only have interest rates increased, but the stock market is obviously giving people some anxiety. Yes. Some people say that that's a good time to invest, right? Warren Buffett might kind of believe in that philosophy, but what are your thoughts on that? So there's an old adage that the best time to invest is when you have the money. <laughs> so you have to invest in a portfolio that's properly designed for you, but there's a great study done by the famous firm called Capital Group that runs the American funds. They're a $2.7 trillion active asset manager, and they do lots of great studies. But this study in particular showed what happened over 20 years. If you put all the money you were going to invest in a given year in on the single lowest day of the year or the single highest day of the year, when you look back over 20 years, you do that 20 years in a row, and the return stream is almost identical. You're in the 8% range. All right, Greg, so you sent me over this financial roadmap, which obviously is super intimidating to me, who has only invested in real estate since I was 24 years old. Tell me a little bit about like what this financial roadmap is and how it helps you then help clients like me. Thank you so much for asking about the roadmap, Tyler. I can't wait to facilitate your financial roadmap exercise for you when you get your documents to me. So what we're gonna do when we do that is we're gonna go through a really interesting values exercise where you get really clear on your values in a, probably a way that you've never done it before. And then we're gonna go quantify your most important goals, two or three or four of your most important financial goals that are most meaningful to you. And then we're gonna take a snapshot based on the documents you sent me of where you are now so that we know what you need in order to get where you're going. And everyone we've ever done this for has been pretty excited to just see the results. Uh, we don't charge anything for it. It's, uh, it's what we call altruistic business development. So thank you, Greg, because obviously in these transitional times, we're always looking for ways to put our feet on the ground. And the way I do that is I talk to experts in different areas. And obviously having someone in the financial services industry that is an expert is a great help and a great ease to me. So thank you for taking the time Smart and uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, until next time, see you then.